Hey guys, Corey here with our second subject on our four subject uh, series on uh, some of the biggest or the most popular uh, sorting algorithms you'll see in C. Insertion, sh uh, shell, merge, and uh, quicksort. <laughs> How can I forget the last one? His name is quicksort. Um, so we're coming at you with shell sort today. We've already done insertion, uh, so let's get to it. Um, the reason I picked shell right after insertion is because shell is, um, oh, as a quick introduction, um, I'm going to be doing two separate videos, one in this one where I'm going to actually code it, like, you know, with you guys, to, I like to do that to give you guys a thought process, you know, of how a coder works and their errors, how they deal with them, um, and, and the next video, I'll just show you the complete code, and I'll go through it line by line as kind of like a wrap-up explanation. Um, hopefully, that'll keep some of my videos shorter, because I know some of the 40 minutes are a little bit long, and hopefully, it'll keep them each at like 15 minutes, you know, so just quick and done. Um, the reason I like to show you guys coding, coding, me coding them, is because I remember hearing that you know a lot of times in math classes students get to see proofs and they get to marvel at how succinct and beautiful the proofs are, but they don't see how those proofs were come to. You know they don't get to see the process of failure and such, and it kind of inspires a sense that uh, they need to be perfect in order to do that stuff. But uh, you'll see in some of my other videos I have plenty of uh, errors, even though I've coded this stuff plenty of times before. In fact, I could I wrote down in class today on a piece of paper. Um, just while I was bored, the whole shell sort algorithm, um, you know, but I still, even though I can do that, I still have tons of errors, so it's important to understand that programmers still have errors, so if you have errors, every program, I mean, we get suspicious of our program if it works the first time, because we know it never works the first time, so, so let's get to it, um, shell sort is an extension off of insertion, um, it speeds it up, because insertion is really good if the list is almost entirely sorted, it's, it's great. But the problem is, is see where I have this one down here, um, <clears throat> uh, it'll take a while until I get to here, and it'll take a while until I sort him back to the beginning, because I'll do all those comparisons with one all the way down. Wouldn't it be nice if we can just jump one down, if not the whole way, at least a big portion, so we can skip over, or at least reduce the comparisons we have to make by a large amount. And so that's what shell sort aims to do, and it rapidly speeds up in short. Insertion sort. Insertion <laughs> sort. Um, so, uh, so uh, getting onto it, here's how it works. Okay, normally with insertion sort, we just keep climbing up, and as soon as, every time we climb up one, you know, if I compare these guys, or uh, examples, if I paired seven and three, and I moved seven, you know, I move seven up, I then check going with three going all the way down to find this right spot. Well, in shell sort, we do the exact same way, but we jump through little gaps or intervals, we call them. So uh, usually an interval I like to pick, you see two different ways. One, you start off a third of the size of your array. I like to start off a half. It's just personal preference. There's literally no kind of, uh, I, I don't know if one's like really better than the other. You can test it for yourself. That could be a little homework or something. So say my example, let's see, this is seven. So I divide by two and I round down. So that's three, right? So my interval is three. So I'm going to go i is equal to three. You commonly see it called n. In fact, I think I even coded it as n. Um, so we start at the, the, the uh, third index, okay? Um, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. I'm going to compare three guys down. So 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to pair 2 and 5. 5 is bigger than 2, so we're good. Now I'm going to move up one, and I'm going to go, okay, 9 compared with 1, 2, 3, 7. 9 is bigger than 7. We're good. All right, we're on a roll here. I'm going to go up, and I go 8. Okay, 8 compared with 1, 2, 3, 8 is bigger than 3. Wow, we're doing really great already. Um, then we go up to 1 and go, all right, 1, 2, 3. 1 is not bigger than 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into 5. Okay, I'm going to store 1 out here. Okay, Then I'm going to say, is 1 bigger than... I'm going to count down another 3. 1, 2, 3. Is 1 bigger than 2? No, it is not. Need a bigger eraser. And then I'm going to count down for my interval, but then I'll see, oh, wait, I'm going past the beginning of the list. So that means one belongs where it is. Okay? And then you usually divide your interval by two or three or however. As long as it keeps decreasing, you know, it's an acceptable method. So if I divide it by two and round down, I get one. And you stop after one, because once it gets down to one, it's an insertion sort once again. Um, so normally with really big a list, you'll start with an interval of a huge number, maybe like 200 or something, right? And you'll go down to 100, and then 50, and then 25, and so on and so forth. But once you reach one, 
it becomes like a normal insertion sort. But since it's already partially sorted, insertion sort is in that domain where we said when it's nearly sorted, it works great. And so since it's nearly sorted right now, when it gets to the one, it's going to work really fast. Okay? And if we look here, we go, is one bigger than seven now? Is three big, or seven bigger than three? Then, yeah. So on and so forth. I'm going to bring the three down. Is seven bigger than two? Yeah. Speed through this because we're kind of we've already gone over this too. Is seven bigger than nine? No. Seven two. But on our way down, I still have to check. Uh, is three bigger than one? No. Is two bigger than three? Yes. I shouldn't have braced that three. <laughs> or is two less than? Sorry. Is two less than three? And it is. Keep three here. And I'm going to compare. Is two less than one? No. So it must go in this spot. So I'm just going to pump it in there. I'm speeding up because we already went over this in the last video, and I don't want to spend too much time just going over again. And so on and so forth. Okay. And then I would start with nine. This is nine bigger than eight. Yeah. And then I'd check all the way down with eight, and then stop here, and so on and so forth. But you can see, um, as you already saw, when we're going through it, we didn't have to make that many comparisons. Everything's near its right spot. And you even get that magnified. The, the bigger the array is, because it's already gone through so many intervals, okay? Um, and uh, so insertion sort really comes into its own here, because it has to make a lot of steps. So shell sort's kind of like the second fastest algorithm you usually see. Um, at its worst case scenario, same with quick sort, they can, you know, go toward the lower end of the spectrum uh, of sorting algorithms, you know, fall down toward uh, you know, normal insertion and such, but usually they're really, really, really fast, and they're great. Um, as a side note, if you wanted a really stable algorithm that always works just confidently, like it's not the fastest, but it's reliable, and that's sometimes what you want, it's merge sort, by the way, which we're going to cover next. I love merge sort. It's probably my favorite. Just, uh, I, you know, kind of there's a little stroke of genius with merge sort. Like I, I think all of them have a really good stroke of genius here. Once you get above insertion, even though insertion is cool itself. So, um, I actually really do like my sorting algorithms. <laughs> Look, I'm getting excited. I got goosebumps, man. I do, that's, I don't know if that's worrying or not. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's shell. So let's go into coding it, okay? So I've already pre-coded something. Just all I've coded is printing a list, okay? Um, and all, which is, you know, I didn't, you guys don't want to see me coding that. And then I've, uh, <laughs> let me just plug in my mechanical key. My main keyboard's broken, so you'll see me use this mechanical one. I'm sure you guys can hear it. Uh, I love this thing, though. I am not mad that my keyboard was broken if it gave me an excuse to use a mechanical one. Uh, people commented about it in class. So I've... Um, now the mouse is unplugged. Huh. I broke my USB ports as well. This computer is taking some beating. Um, so all I did is say, these are the only two functions we'll need, print, list, and sort. And then we're just going to make an array of all these numbers. Uh, we're just going to print it out. We're going to sort it and then print it out again so we can see that it's sorted. Uh, all right, let's get into the bones of it. Okay, and remember, if you want to see, well, I mean, you're probably still you're not here anymore if you <laughs> uh, want to do this, but in the next video, uh, I'm going to quickly go over it at the end. We're actually going to get code done, but the next video, if you really just want to see me going over the code, you can just go to that video. So let's start off. So first, uh, we have our size right here coming in. Okay, um, I just made it 20 already. Uh, because I, 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 you can do, there's a trick for getting size. Uh, size is equal to, uh, size of returns the number of bytes of an object here. So I can say nums divided by size of uh, num zero. So what am I doing here? Well, I'm saying, if I told you I had $30 and I only had $5 bills, well, how many bills do I have in my wallet? I have six bills, right? How'd you do that? Well, in your head, you went, oh, he's got 30, and each bill is worth $6, or $5, so 30 divided by 5 is 6. The same idea is here. I go, give me how many bytes this takes up. So say it takes up 64 bytes, and give me, um, you know, or maybe it takes up, 60, yeah, 64 bytes. And then I say, give me the size of the first guy in here, right? And the first guy in here is integer, and every integer has the same size, right? Even if it's 20 versus 7, um, as long as they're not longs or anything. And so say an integer takes up one byte, right? So if I had 64 bytes and each guy element only takes up one byte, I know I have 64 elements, okay? Same principle there. So I'm doing, you can pass it in. Uh, I just kept it 20 for simplicity. 
Uh, you could totally do that. In fact, in other codes, you see all my codes. Ooh, Kaufman filter. I'm going to be doing a series on that really soon once I get that working. Uh, it's a robotics thing. Be, get hype for that, okay? Like the hype train is about to go off there. No breaks. No breaks on the coding hype train. So let's get to it. So we have our size. So our interval, int interval, is going to equal the size divided by 3, okay? And we said as long as our interval, once it gets down to 1, that's the final pass, right? Well, uh, 1 divided by 2, because if I'm, oh, sorry, I meant 2 here. Um, because if I'm dividing by 2 every time, I finally get to 1. Well, 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, but it, I have it stored in integer, so it'll round down to 0 automatically, right? So I, I want the last pass to be 1, right? So I'm going to say, as long as the interval is greater than 0, keep doing your thing, okay? And I'm going to define some integers. I'm going to say int inner outer. Um, these two guys are going to be pretty simple. Uh, oh, and I'll also say uh, val to swap. Um, inner is basically uh, that when I have that array and I have that guy that I'm comparing the intervals to, I'm going, well, he's the index that's going up, but when I start to go backwards down, like I compare here and then I compare you know, down another guy, um, I have to subtract from outer to get to the next place to compare with the guy even before him, but I don't want to change what outer is, right? Because I want to remember where I left off. So when I'm done comparing down the chain, I can come back and continue forward. So I'm making inner as a second variable that's going to be like, okay, I'm starting here, and then I can subtract from him to work my way down the array. And then when I'm done with him, we come back to outer. So I've preserved where I was. It's like a bookmark, right? It's like a bookmark while I'm going back in the book I'm reading. Um, I do it with textbooks all the time. When I'm taking notes, and I don't want to lose my spot. I want to go see what, I don't know, William McKinley said about freaking the Spanish-American War or something. Um, so we're going to work our way through the list. The, <laughs> the list. Um, at the bottom of this while loop, though, well, I'll do it when I get there. So I'm going to say outer is equal to the interval. Because you notice, this shell sort was one of the hardest ones. Did I get out of paint? Ah, okay. Um, you notice, if I want to be able to compare a guy with three back from him, oh, I have to start at the third guy, right? So if my interval is every, like, say, five, well, I'm going to start at the fifth guy so I can compare, you know, I can start off comparing five back. What's the point of starting at zero if I know I won't be able to compare him to anyone? Because I'm like, oh, I can't compare him. Okay, now I'm to one. Oh, I can't compare him. Oh, three, I can't compare yet. There's not enough people back in the list. So why not start at that interval so I can automatically start comparing. Why waste time? So I'm going to say for outer equals interval. And uh, I know this, this shell sort really confused me when I first was learning shell sort. Like, I was really confused. I didn't get, like, what was this outer equals interval stuff? I, man, it was, it was bonkers. I had no idea what was going on, man. It was more confusing than quick sort, which people argue you should always use shell sort um, unless you really, really, really need to use quick sort because quick sort is pretty complex. We'll be going over it last. But... Okay, as long as outer is less than size, makes sense there, and just go up, because we're just going by up every time, and then comparing back, going up, comparing back, and we don't want to go over our array, so pretty straightforward there. I'm going to go pretty in depth on the explanation, because I know I was really confused, and I fancied myself some hoity-toity programmer, some really good, so. <laughs> so, um, we're going to start at the outer guy, and we're going to make our first comparison back, right? But we're going to store that value in outer. Val to swap is equal, because we want to store it outside the list while we're comparing down, right? Because wherever we end up, we're just going to plop them in. And we're going to be sliding everybody else back. So his original spot is going to be lost to somebody else, right? So while we're going back. So we want to store them outside of the array. So val to swap equals nums. Enter. You could put outer in here. doesn't matter. I just like to put inner to help it know what's going on here. And I'm going to say while. First, I'm going to go, uh, I have to check that there's still actually somebody for me to compare to. To check that, I say, while inner, the index, is greater than the interval minus 1. Okay. Uh, because say our interval is 2, well, I want to make sure he's at least bigger than the index 1, right? Because if he's index 2, that's great. I can go, um, you know, to 1, 0, and I'd compare with the 0 with index. But if he is 1, uh, I go 0, oh, there's nobody behind here, no pointer, just weird data. 
So I'm going to make sure he's always one bigger than the interval, okay? He's going to start off at like maybe like 50, 500, you know, in your array. But eventually when he's skipping his way back, he'll get to this point where he doesn't have, he doesn't have enough room to compare with anybody anymore. And we'll stop then. But we will also check if nums inner minus the interval, because we're comparing the interval backwards, is greater than, oh, greater than uh, val to swap. Because if it's not, if the guy behind him isn't bigger than him, there's no reason to bring him up. We're just done. So we'll stop in either of those cases. Okay? Um, so while we're looping, every time we skip back, nums inner, the place we're currently at, is now equal. We're going to slide everybody back, is equal to nums inner minus the interval. Let me just check time here. 15 minutes, not bad. <laughs> uh, nums interval. Two, two, two. And then we'll say uh, inner minus equals the interval. Great. When we break out of this loop, we know we're at the spot we want to insert our value. So I will go nums inner, because that's the spot we're at. And I'm going to insert our val to swap. Okay? Great. We are nearly done. In fact, the final part we need to do is once we uh, break out of the for loop, once we're done doing each one of those interval comparisons throughout the entire array all the way up, once outer reaches the end, we need to make our interval smaller, right? So interval divide equals 2. Just like that. Um, I believe that's done. Let me go check my other shell sort code. <laughs> Just to make sure I don't have any errors for you guys. Do, 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 do. Yeah, cool, that's it. Hmm. All right. Um, looks good, unless I spelled something wrong. But I didn't. So let's try them out. Do, 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 do. Oh, man, stop working. <laughs> All right, let me pause it real fast. I probably just forgot a pointer somewhere or something. All right, be right back. All right, hey, guys, uh, back. Uh, it was a really funny error, um, really simple. I uh, just forgot to put inner equals outer. Totally meant to do that. Um, that was literally it. Because right here, when I was going valid swap equals num inner, I was like, well, inner doesn't exist. And it was tripping out on me. Um, yeah, it took me a couple minutes to find. But we back. Um, so let's run it. Uh, and so we send it this pile of junk. And we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on and so forth. Boom, it works. It's great. It's fantastic. Uh, if you want to clock it, you can to really see how much faster it is. Um, I think it's and I think it's big O notation. If you know big O notation, I think it's n log n. I think, I think, and I know it's pretty darn good. Um, I know merge sorts up there too at like O log n ish or n log n ish. Um, but sometimes when you're doing like, say, microcontrollers or things with really tight space restrictions, like you just have no room to spare for memory, that's why you'd use shell sort. You'd use shell sort over uh, quick sort uh, if you don't want something super complex. Uh, and you're, you know, like C, quick, you know, like higher level languages, it's not that hard to do uh, uh, quick sort. Uh, the lower you get, the little bit harder it gets because the complexity, more complex algorithms take a bit more time. And search and sort's really good if you would know you have things almost sorted uh, and you just want something really, really fast in there. Um, and then uh, please don't use like bubble sort <laughs> or anything lower than it, <laughs> uh, like selection. Just There's a lot of sorting algorithms out there, but these are the most popular ones that we'll go over. In fact, you see a bubble sort over here. I was planning to do a video on bubble sort because it's, it's what they start off teaching you guys, but like... Why? You know, you're never going to, you only need it if it's really quick and dirty and you, like, you can figure it out anyway. Like, like a five-year-old can figure out how to do bubble sort. <laughs> no offense if you're having trouble figuring out a bubble sort. Um, if you want me to do a video on bubble sort, I'll do a video on bubble sort because as you see, I have the code done. But uh, I'm going to end this video here and then uh, start my kind of uh, post, post game recap. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you learned something about shell sort and I hope you join us for the rest of the talks on sorting algorithms. See you next time.